Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. This episode is sponsored by my patrons. I want to thank you all for your ongoing support, helping me to release more videos about beer and home brewing. Today we're going to do a grain to glass video of my all Swedish beer. So we have an experimental Swedish yeast, we have old style Swedish malt and we have homegrown Swedish variety old style hops as well going into this beer. If you are new to my channel I do grain to glass videos like this one, also do uh, homebrew reviews, gear reviews, experimental videos where I try to question some myths and uh, yeah, known habits of brewing and also occasionally events and DIY videos. If that sounds interesting to you, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you don't miss anything when I post a video like this one. And of course, a thumbs up really helps a long way. So, are you ready? I think we're gonna start with the brew day footage and then we come back and pour the beer, the smash, the Swedish smash beer. And of course, we're gonna go through the recipe of this beer. The recipe also goes up in the Dr. Hans recipe book on my Patreon page for you guys who want that. We have well over 100 recipes now and it's growing and growing both my own recipes and beer made recipes so do check it out if you're interested so let's get on with the brew footage time to measuring up the grains we're only gonna use the uh, Walder swedish pilsner malt in this one because it's a swedish smash beer single malt single hop so only one type of hop. Really like that scale. You have links down in the description for like mo the most of the stuff I use. If I think it's good, I'll put a link down below. If uh, I don't like the stuff I'm using, I would never link to it. Awesome filming as usual. Um, I will use five kilos, okay? Okay, time to get crushing using the uh, Bulldog Malt Mill. I've, I have done some modifications to it, um, but I'm more pleased with this mill. The only thing that I don't like about it is uh, it doesn't hold five kilos of grain, so I, I need to do maybe some more modification to it because I always have to have some other container with the rest of the grains so but it's a nice meal and yeah the boulder malt is very very hard so it takes for like forever to mill so I wouldn't like to be hand milling it, so you need a good power battery machine or yeah, whatever. Don't try it with the outer motor. Adding a cap of lactic acid to this to start with. Just gonna measure the pH in a bit. Temp. Let's do this for 66 C. Okay, let's do 700 watts today. It's a bit cold outside. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a good stir now, then hook up the circulation and uh, come back and take the pH. pH is 5.4, which is okay. I will add some more lactic acid. circulating and uh, yeah the water are clearing up 
nice. It's got to be done. Like 5.3 ish. Okay, so sparching time. I'm heating up for a boil right away. So I can save some time. I'm gonna sparge up to about when I meet the grain pipe. And that's it's about 28-ish liter and uh, the rest will drain off in there. Okay, this is the hop we will using. This is the Mauritz 85, so it's 75 grams, divided in two packs. This was harvested here from my garden or from my forest. Um, I have a video on that, so I'll put a card up and a, a link down below, as usual. Uh, I'm gonna use all of it. I've uh, read that Mauritz has an alpha acid of 4.1, of course that will not be exact, but that's the figure I'm going with. And I want to do this uh, like a smash beer, getting closer to boil. I want to uh, do this uh, smash beer, all, it's not the smash part that's important, it's the all Swedish part. So this is a Swedish variety hop, and we used a Swedish variety malt. This has grown in Sweden, and it's a Swedish variety. And the uh, Boulder Pilsner malt is a Swedish variety grown and malted in Sweden. And the yeast is wild collected here in Sweden, so all Swedish beer. Uh, I would have preferred to use like Magnum for bittering, then I could use a lot of this at the end, but um, then it wouldn't be all Swedish, because I don't have any Swedish Magnum. And I want to use this, I want to do a smash. So um, about, I think, 45 grams will go into 60 minutes, and uh, 15 grams of 15, and 15 grams at flame out. And uh, we will do a very long steep with this, as we're doing this as a no chill. I don't like the look of this. So, I'm a skimmer, so I want it to look neat. Do you skim your beers? Comment down below. Question of the day, are you a skimmer? Please comment down below. See? Now it looks much better. To skim or not? That is the question. I skim. So this has been boiling now for uh, yeah, almost an hour. I did sparge it a little bit more, so I uh, had to boil it down to the max mark. But from here now, we're gonna do a uh, 60 minute boil. So we will add first hop edition. Um, 45 grams of uh, Mauritz 85. This will take up much room. Okay, so clock is started. I'm gonna give this a good stir. We're at the 50 minute mark. In goes yeast nutrient and fruit of flock and 15 grams of hops. Mauritz 85. Fifteen more minutes to go, and uh, 
then we'll add the last hop drop and uh, I will just cover this with uh, say plastic wrap, bean wrap and put on a lid and this will cool itself down for tomorrow. So the uh, we will have a long steeping time so I've uh, added IBUs for that in the recipe. Cool crashing the uh, starter. Well, it's time for flame out. Flame out. Fifteen grams, and that was the whole harvest. All I had, Maurits, eighty-five really want them in here so much these the new ones I want to contact it's gonna put some clean wrap on it okay and uh, see still hot the lid goes on so nothing will get in this and now it will cool itself down until tomorrow. Okay, time to taste the starter. Uh, the can to the starter, some of it in the glass and some of it out of the glass. So, tastes like Pilsner, the fruity. Really nice. So I have just some left here in the uh, bottom of the Limay flask. Okay, it's time we're down to 17C. It's the next day. Don't wait to add the yeast. Add the yeast as quickly as possible. So that was a decanted 1.8 liter starter. I made a 2 liter starter, but I have harvested 2 deciliter from that. Uh, I have a video about how I make my starter. I'm gonna put a card up and a link down below so you can go and watch that after this video is over. So, yeast is added, water going in at 17 degrees. Uh, the plan was to start this at 17 degrees, so awesome. Uh, I'm also gonna give this a uh, one minute blast of oxygen before I take it down to the brew shed. Look at that clear looking lovely wart. Uh, took a sample, so I'm gonna take a reading also. I was aiming for 1046 and we have 1046 awesome on the money that means that I dialed in the uh, Boulder Pilsner malt very well for my system awesome giving it a one minute blast of oxygen to give the Cheese this as good a chance as possible. Really recommend this. This is a pure oxygen tube, and we have a hose down there. You can have a rod, even, and there's a 0.5 micron diffusion stone, which is the size you want to do use, and that makes very fine bubbles. That's the one you want to use if you're using oxygen, and that's the uh, that's what the doctor recommends using all like the gears I've uh, used. I have looked at some links for you so you can check it out. It's, it's 
in the description if you want something like this or most of the stuff I use. Okay, we have a problem. Temperature is good, but uh, the lid has cracked. We have some leakage there, so we need to clean this up. And uh, I need to ditch this sucker and uh, change it out for a uh, blow off tube. Damn it! But that's a good healthy fermentation at a good temperature. So awesome. Open it up and clean off the edge. I'm gonna keep on cleaning. Um, let's put in the lid back now. And uh, then I will try to hook up, uh, I will try to, I, I will hook up a uh, low off tube. Okay, because okay, we're safe now, but I, I don't want to attract any like fruit flies, anything to it. So, I'm gonna keep on cleaning. Okay, I couldn't find any good blue off tubes. I need to buy some more tubing. So, I decided, and I think it's good, uh, to attach the uh, plate to again because. Uh, Everyone wants to know about, not everyone of course, but many people were asking about the Plato. So I, I need to uh, yeah, try it more. And uh, this means that I had to take another gravity reading and put that number in. The gravity now is 1038. So I've entered 1038 in the, in the correction section in the Plato. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed the brew footage. So we're gonna pour the beer. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the ingredients while we taste the beer, because it was a new variety of yeast for me, a new variety of hops. The, the malt I had used before, it was the Boulder malt, which I used in the uh, Boulder smash, Sass smash, and the uh, Swedish Belgian blonde. But let's give this beer a pour. Okay, so it's fairly, carbonated and uh, it was a little bit while since I brewed this so this has been sitting for quite a while in the keg now so it has cleared up nicely as you see didn't find this with any gelatin or something like that okay so here we have the beer we have a golden colored beer not as dark as you see it on on camera it's crystal clear, but this has been sitting for uh, what is it, like three months now in the keg, waiting for me to do this video. Okay, so let's give this one a nose. Okay, I do get some like citrusy notes and. Uh, yeah, it smells like a smells like a lager, and you really should know more about the ingredients, I guess, maybe before we even taste it. But uh, yeah, I have to dive in now. So cheers, guys. The K yeast, experimental yeast, is supposed to brew lager at ale temperature. So I fermented this at. 17 to start with then I bumped up the temperature during the way and yeah even the uh, the starter had this like lager character to it it's it was almost like when I first made a starter from Pilsner yeast the WLP 800 when you get a scent of Pilsner just from the the yeast and this yeast is similar to that it's not like the pilsner flavor and aroma it's more like a common lager when uh, we in sweden think of a macro swedish lager this yeast really reminds me about that 
it's also interesting how much this yeast lets the hop shine through. It's still very hoppy. This has been sitting for three months. I have brewed another beer with this one, which were a little bit hoppier as well. Gonna do a grain to glass video on that also. So uh, yeah, don't forget to sub up and hit that little bell. This yeast was also said to flocculate very well. I think it really took some time for it to uh, flocculate. As clear as this one, of course. But it is a very clean fermented beer and there is a interesting contribution from the yeast. Hopes wise I do get like citrusy flavors. The hops in this one it's called Mauritz 85. It's an old Swedish hop from a hop institute in Sweden. Um, that's no longer available, but they're trying to restore the old Swedish hops. So this is from an experiment back in the 40s, I think, where they were experimenting with getting hops better suited for the Swedish climate. And uh, I think the experiment of this one was to uh, get an earlier crop. So this is supposed to give like citrusy grape note even some spiciness i don't get that at all um, if you dry hop with this you're supposed to get uh, mushrooms leather and cheese so uh, maybe for next year's harvest i could do like a weird pizza beer where we can get some mushroom and cheese from dry hopping with the Maurits 85 <laughs> I know you love that stuff. Or is it just me? Comment down below. Do you love the weird beer? Oh, I have a really weird beer with you coming up. Um, yeah, I have to do a video about that also. But also have some tasting with you. So it's a lot of videos to try to film and, and get out. Also experimenting today with a, a new microphone up here. So I have double microphone going up in the Zoom F4. So we experimented with that. Also, ah, life is good. The Bald Malt I talked about back in the Balder Malt video, I think. Yeah, I'll put a link and a card and yeah, everything, you know, so you can go and find it. And I will also put links to the Esther Blonde, the Belgian, Swedish Belgian Blonde, where I did uh, use the Esther Geist. Of course, you can also watch the uh, Boulder Smash. We we'll also talk a little bit more about the Boulder Malt. The Boulder Malt was kindly donated to me from Varbo Kvarn, and the Geist was donated from KG. So, thanks. Let's go through the recipe. Well, it's a, it's a simple recipe. And yeah, as I said earlier, this recipe is already up on my Patreon page in the Dr. Hans recipe book. Uh, I have to sort some sections out there. This, in, this is in the uh, like other beer recipe section in the Dr. Hans recipe folder. And it's called the Swedish Smash. So I used five kilos of Pilsner Bolde Malt. That's it. And I used all of my Maurits 85, the whole crop. I didn't know what alpha acid it was, but I found an article online and that said 4.1%. So I went with that number and uh, I was aiming for like a Pilsner and You do get that that freshness from the bitterness so yeah I think really it worked out fine so I used 45 grams of Mauritz at 60 minutes and that was really 
a lot because I only had 75 grams so I used more than half of it but I needed that because 4.1 percent ain't that uh, high of an alpha acid and I did want that pilsner like bitterness bite to it so I used 45 grams at 60 minutes and at 50 minutes I used 15 grams and at flame out I used 15 grams. The OJ was 1046, the FJ was 1010. So it's a 4.7 ABV beer. And I did as I usually do. I made a big starter. And uh, if you want to know how I make my starters, I'll put a card up and a link down below to how I make my starters. I made like a two liter starter and uh, harvested about two deciliters from that. So I pitched the uh, the rest. Ah, of course, I decanted the starter and pitched the yeast. And uh, yeah, this was fermented in a normal uh, brewing bucket, just heat controlled with my control heat control systems. I took down the temperature in the brew shed and just used heat and control the heat. I have a video for, for that as well. So I've tried to put a link down below. Don't know how many cards I can put up because I had my fridge occupied. I only have one fermentation fridge and this was occupied with my long-term experiment, which I just put out a video out about. So I'm gonna put, yeah, you know by now, links. And also links for, yeah, everything. Like I try to put down links for everything. So I'm gonna try to put also the new mic in there. And yeah, you find the glasses and everything I use for beer and brewing and filming. I try to put links down below because I do get a lot of questions. Back to the beer. Cheers. Interesting yeast. And um, as I said, I also have another beer brew with this yeast. We're gonna come back to this yeast. And the uh, Maurer's 85, I don't have any hops left. But there are stores in Sweden where you actually can buy the Maurer's 85. So I thought it would be cool to use ingredients that people actually can get if you want to try and brew this beer. It's a Balder Malt and a Mauritz. To my knowledge, K yeast haven't mass produced the uh, this yeast. I don't know actually if he has named it already, but I know he likes it, so uh, he really should put it out there. And it's an interesting yeast, and maybe you can use it for like California Commons and uh, yeah, hybrid beers like that also. Because it is an ale with uh, some lagerish character. And uh, we have a good looking beer. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post a video like this one. And of course, a thumbs up, really appreciate it. There's my Patreon page to check out if you want to. And yeah, if you want to send me beer mail, you'll find my contact information down below in the description box. So guys, cheers and thanks for watching Dr. Hans out.